All right, guys, we took the whole team to RM Sotheby's in Fort Lauderdale. It's about 15 minutes from our location. We're going to take a look at some of the cars here, see if we can get some new inventory. It's a great place for us to come to because it's so close. So we get to see it with our eyes instead of bidding online. Let's do this. Hey, Raf. What's up? Ready to look at some cars? Mm -hmm. They have everything here at RM Sotheby's from Fox Body Mustangs to a Fetamaso Pantera. This one's really nice. It's a 1972 351 powered. And the cool part, no reserve. So we've been following these throughout the online auctions, and I think this is easily a $115,000 car. So we'll see what it does across the block. Paint is very nice. I've rated like an 8 out of 10. Wheels are perfect, they're polished, and they're the correct ones. Interior is very clean. It's missing a couple of components, but I don't think that's really going to bring the value down. Carpet's nice and it's proper. The dash pad is perfect. This is a good one. Let's see what happens. Here's another unique one. Everybody knows what a Fox Body Mustang is. This is a 1987, and it's a one of one, so it has the interior with the gray exterior. Car, they're estimating it to be 35 to 40,000, but it has 49,000 miles. I think this would be more so a 18 to 20,000 dollar car because of the automatic transmission. Really clean, really beautiful, but it's not the 90 to 93 model, which is going to bring you more money, different steering wheel, um, and better mass airflow conversion setups. Here's another one to look out for. It's a 2002 Viper GTS. They produced 121 of them. It's in graphite gray, extremely nice. Paint is original, so there are a couple of minor imperfections, but I think that this car is gonna demand easily $80,000, and we'll see what happens when it crosses the block. Super clean, all the lights are very nice, so if you needed to replace these, it would be about, about $1,200. Interior is perfect, and it looks like it has 4,900 miles on it, so I think that the 80 to 100 would be definitely possible here. Those wheels are perfect, brand new tires. Let's see. So this is a pretty unique one. It's an all metal construction, 1983 Gullwing recreation. So essentially if it was a real Gullwing, we'd be talking $2 million. This one is probably gonna be able to be affordable for someone that wants to have the same styling aspects of the Gullwing. All metal. Interior is extremely nice and they built it on a 1983 chassis. Looks like it has a four-speed transmission and the rear glass is exceptionally nice with all the leather and the buttons. Wheels are great. This is a cool one. Let's see what it sells for. This is an awesome, awesome example of a Lagonda. This is the, the Mac Daddy of the wedge shape. If you ask me, this is the car that like broke all standards when it came to design in the 80s. 
And for a four-door saloon, it still looks sleek. I mean, if you look at the new coupes today, like the Mercedes CLS, the Audi A7, all those cars basically mimic this granddaddy of a sedan. I love the fact that it's got all nothing but like really sharp lines. And then when you look on the inside, it's the first car to have a full like digital cluster. And they're just really, really unique. You don't see them in this shape especially since there was only 654 units made ever. So it's a wonderful car. That steering wheel is crazy. Yeah. What do you think it's going to sell for? Well, I think this is going to go for somewhere between 80 and 100,000 because I've seen one of these go um, on bat about a month ago for about 100 grand. So yeah, they're becoming a lot more desirable. They're, they're just really finicky w when it comes to all of that electronic inside, but when they're sorted or from a collection and they haven't been driven, super cool car. All right guys, this is one of my personal favorites, the Porsche 930 Turbo, but with the flat nose or the flak bow as it's known, it's 935 designation, 3.2 liter flat six turbo, fastest production car in Germany at the time. It finished in this gorgeous Guards Red. This thing's primo. What do you think it's gonna sell for? Uh, 200, easy. Yeah, all right, see. This is a cool one, guys. Arguably one of the coolest things to come from 1986, after myself. Turbo V6, black on black, low miles, cherry. I heard it's easy to work on these things. Yeah, all you need is a shoehorn and really small hands. Where's the turbo? It's way back here. So here we have a 2008 CR, which is a S2000, but it's a limited edition with the different body ground effects, et cetera, interior, and it's a numbered car. This one's a little bit rough and they're asking for 60,000. You can see that the, the front end's been repainted. They're saying low mileage, it has around 15,000 miles. Engine bay is really clean. They use a lot of slick shine here. How many cans do you think they went through? I think two. Yeah. two <laughs> at least two cans of slick shine. I mean, the paint, it could probably get buffed out, but it was a hard 15,000 miles. It's still a cool car, though, the CR. The, other thing the, top, the top's been repainted, too, and the dash. The dash is sitting in the sun. These are all things you want to look for when you're, when you're, when you're buying a car from an auction or a collector car. When you look inside too, they're saying 15,000 miles. There's a lot of wear on a lot of the sills. Uh, steering wheel is very clean. So I, I don't know. I don't really believe the mileage to tell you the truth. But hey, it's not my car, so I have, I have no way to tell. Underneath it's very clean and it is very collectible. I would say that this is worth 50,000 to 55,000 dollars. It's completely resprayed. Yeah. So, I mean, things like that, when you open up the doors and you see this orange peel here, the, the I don't, texture is yeah, different. I don't think it's been in an accident because it still has all the Honda stickers throughout, but it was resprayed for sure. So uh, which one would you guys pick to drive home? So which one would you guys pick out of this whole entire area? Uh, the thing that we came in. Yeah, that Bel Air is nice. That's 110,000 that easy. Supra? That's a Supra. There's a Supra there. Uh, I like the E-Type. I would go for the 4GT in white with blue with four options right over there. Look at this thing. Beautiful. Watch it's out for your, watch the door. I got made in one of these. It's exactly this color. Hey, I've seen this My grandpa before. had this exact color Mercedes. I'm pretty yeah. sure that 
I was conceived in the back. So wait a minute, your grandfather conceived yeah. you? Is that what you're just trying to tell me right now? <laughs> we recently sold a 1955 with the uh, optional V8 engine. This one is a 1954, and the only motor that they came with was the Blue Flame 150. So it was a six-cylinder Corvette. Chevrolet decided to pump those numbers up. This is a pretty unique one because it has a tri-power setup, so it still is peppy. Look at that interior, extremely nice. Dash is perfect. This easily should bring, I would say, 105 to 110,000 based on the condition, the color, and that carburetor setup. Come look at the carburetor setup. So you have tri-power right here. They're all individual throttle bodies. In that sleep, someone recognized this from Hot Sauce Thursday. No joke. I don't know who it is. He saw it. He saw it. So if you guys don't subscribe, you better subscribe to it.